Yeah, it's a mighty good day to praise the Lord. How many know that? That it is a mighty good day to give God some praise. Now listen, I'm a down-home Baptist preacher. That's why they couldn't. I make a lot of noise. So if you... I know Brother Chris, he, you know, he's, that's just, that's just Chris. But I'm going to make some noise up in here. This is my story. This is my song. Praise in my Savior. All the day long, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. All the day long, this is my story, this is my song, I keep praising my Savior. All the day long. Father, I thank you for who you are. You're God and God all by yourself. Father, give me what you need me to have, what you need me to say, and how you need me to say it. Father, I thank you right now for the opportunity just to stand and preach your word. Make me an empty vessel waiting before a full fountain. Fill me up that I may do your bidding and your bidding alone. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big hand clap. If you'll turn with me to 1 Peter, 1 Peter 2 and 9, I want to talk about the identity in who we are. The identity in who we are. Are we all there? If you don't mind standing for the reading of God's word, look what it says. Our deacons are going to get me one that I can look at the back back there. Amen. I'm looking at it right now. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen? Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Listen, this is the same Peter. If y'all don't mind, if y'all don't mind keeping it up there for me, because I'm going to stay right in there. Mm-hmm. This is the same Peter, Peter, doubting Peter, walking on the water, Peter, Peter, cussing Peter. See, some folk got quiet right there. <laughs> Cutting off an ear, Peter, ready to fight Peter. This is this same Peter. Anybody believe that? Because again, the Bible says that Jesus said, Peter, listen, the devil desires to sift you as wheat, but I prayed for you. And not only did I pray for you, but I'm praying that when you come into who you are, that's what he was saying, when you come to yourself, then strengthen your brethren.
that when you come to yourself, see, this is actually Peter that has come to himself. And he says he defines who we are. See, he's not talking to anybody. He's, he's talking to the believers that are in the church. In other words, the believers that believe in who Jesus is, the believers that know beyond a shadow of a doubt who God really is. See, people know of God. They know of him. But then there's only a few of us that really know him because we are the people that actually trust him, that believe in him, that understand and we walk with him, not only walk with him, but he walks with us. Anybody in the house? Because again, when you understand who you really are, then it's not, uh, it's, it's not, 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 not easily uh, persuaded to go the other way. See, Paul says, again, when we come to know who we are, Paul says that we're no longer tossed to and fro by every wind and doctrine. In other words, we know what we believe in. Matter of fact, we know can I say it just like I want to say it? We know what we know. Matter of fact, when you came in here, didn't nobody have to tell you to, to test the bench because you knew the bench was going to hold you. I don't care how big you are. You sat down without even testing the bench because you had faith in the bench. Matter of fact, we ought to have that same type of faith in who we serve. When I saw Richard sit down in that chair, Richard, Richard got his, his books and all of that, and he, he sat down, he didn't test the chair, he didn't shake it, he, didn't, he just sat down. Some of y'all, listen, listen, I know Pastor Gray's, I don't talk about Pastor Gray's, I can talk about y'all. I, I tell the church, keep looking straight ahead, because you ain't got no business looking at nobody else. If I sat down in the seat, I, I, I kind of shove and... and, and to make sure that if it don't crack or crinkle, I can hold it in because cause I'm almost 300 pounds. Amen. And so if it holds me, then I know that, that, again, anybody else can sit on this seat. Now, now listen, now listen, when it gets to be a little bit too many, I, I, I start kind of. But I know the seat can hold because not only did it hold, before it held me the many, 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 many times. Matter of fact, our God is the same exact way. If he held your mother, my mother, your grandmother, all of, then he ought to be able to hold what? He ought to be able to hold me. Peter, Peter sits up here and says that he tells us what our identity is. See, the only thing is that, that some of us don't want to hold up to our identity. Hmm. We don't want to hold up to who we really are. See, when the world gets crazy, Jesus told us that we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Jesus told us that. And if he told us that, then it ought to be what we're supposed to be. That when the world gets crazy, or when the world gets crazier, that we ought to be able to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Matter of fact, if the salt was to lose its savor, it's good for nothing. I love steak. I really do. Folk come to me with A1 and all of that Heinz 57. I say, no, it can't be a steak if you got to put all of that on there. <laughs> See, a real steak can own up to its own self. And then if you put some salt on it, it doesn't do nothing but enhance the flavors. That's there. But I know when the salt ain't good, you know when, they, when you go to a, a restaurant and, and see salt grass don't have rice in their in they salt shakers. They don't put that in there. Some restaurants you go to got some rice in there to, to save. I don't want no rice in my salt shaker. I want to taste the salt. But the Bible says that when the salt loses its savor, it's good for nothing 
but to be trampled under the feet of men. Anybody ever saw your grandmother make ice cream? I'm, I'm talking about real grandmothers. We got some in here, amen, that, that, that made homemade ice cream. And you know, it took some work to make some ice cream back then. The kids, we loved it. We loved it, but we didn't want to do the work. In other words, she'd get that salt and she'd say, here, you got to put this in there. We got to turn. We got to turn that thing. We got to turn it. 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 You got to turn it. You got to turn it. By, by the time, matter of fact, we had a line of kids. Now, you want some ice cream. Don't, don't turn. If you don't turn it, you're not getting none. Because of the simple fact is that it takes work. What are you trying to say, Pastor? What are you trying to say? It takes work to be a Christian. It takes work. It takes your attitude to change. See, some folk don't want to change. That's why I told you this is the same Peter. Peter had to change in who he was. That brings me to my points. See, you didn't think I was going to. Brings me to my points. The first point is, is your identity. Let's look at what it says. He says, you are a chosen. Are y'all reading the same thing I'm reading? Chosen generation. A royal, a holy, a peculiar. Matter of fact, he showed you who you are. And the first thing is, people that don't know their identity can never be what they really supposed to be. See, Jesus said, you're not only the salt of the earth, but you're the light of the world. Who hides a light upon the bushel and keeps it there? That's crazy. When God stepped out into the world, he stepped out into darkness. I'm in Genesis, Genesis 1. The first thing that came out of God's mouth was, let there be, oh, I'm glad I got some Bible readers in here. Let there be light. And the thing about it is, is that it was so. So if he spoke the first thing to, to comprehend or, or to blot out darkness, then he already comes back and Jesus comes back and says, then you are the light of the world. Then you should be able to comprehend the darkness in the world. What is, what, what, what is darkness? Darkness is that that goes contrary to God's word. What is darkness? The sinful nature that we have deep down within. Because you do know we were all born in sin and shapen in iniquity. But somebody ought to say thank be unto God that he sent Jesus to change who we are. See, again, he died for our sins. Not only did he die for our sins, but he rose that we may be the powerful ones inside of the world. If we never understand who our identity is, then we will never understand who we really are. Are any change folk in here? Well, let me help you. Because you ain't always been the same way that you are right now. As a matter of fact, you, if, we, if we understand who we really are, some of us still have those same characteristics as Peter. We just hide them. Listen, a man brought a parrot, took the parrot with him wherever he went. Took it with him, put him on his shoulder, took him with him. This parrot that talked. Parrot that, that always was dutiful in looking at his surroundings. Well, man took the parrot with him to the liquor store. See, that's what I'm trying to tell you. All of us ain't been what we are now. Took it to the liquor store. Not only took it to the liquor store, but took it to the house of ill repute. Oh, you know what that house is. I, got, I still got a young fella in here. I don't, I don't want, I, those of you that don't know, don't want don't to hurt his psyche, amen. 
but took him to the house of ill repute. Now, not only did he take him to the house of ill repute, took him to the drug house. Took him, took him wherever he went. Took, took him to all of those things that, 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 that church folk just don't go to. But then all of a sudden, he decided to bring him to church. To First United Methodist. <laughs> to New Hope. I'm the only folk that's in here. Took him. Sat on the very back row. Not on the front row, but the very back row. Where the parrot could actually look around and see. And the parrot all of a sudden start cussing. Matter of fact, when he looked at the ushers, started cussing. Looked at the audio ministry, started cussing. Looked at the, the congregation, even started cussing louder. Looked at the choir, looked at the praise team, and started cussing even louder. When he got to the pulpit, oh, he went to. The man said, shh. We in church. Perry got louder even more. He said, won't you stop cussing? He said, I can't. Same folk. Same folk. Same folk. Same folk. Same folk. What are you trying to tell me, Perry, that, that in, inside the church it's the same folk that used to be out there in the world. They're just trying to change who they are. See, you should never come up in here like you so holy that you can't sit beside somebody that's got something wrong with them and in, can't encourage them that they, if they stay on God's road, if they stay on God's path, that they can soon change. Preach Pastor Graves, I believe I will. Because again, until we realize that we have to change on the inside and then let people see the light of us on the outside so they can glorify God because of the good works that he has placed in you. See, the church, not this building, because this building can sit here another 130 something years. But the people on the inside is who have to change. Because we are the body of Christ. We are the believers. Matter of fact, we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. In other words, that, that, that we are a holy nation. We are peculiar people. In other words, every time somebody comes in contact with you, they ought to see a change. Matter of fact, when your friends come up to you and say, I remember when. And if they can still say that right now, then you ain't did no. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You ain't changed. You still cussing folk out. You ain't changed. Keep looking straight ahead. You still want to cut folk ear off. You ain't changed. You, you, you still going to the liquor store. You ain't changed. Well, pastor's all right to have a drink. Yeah, it is. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not bothering folk that, that, that take a, a little nip, but when, when the nip changes this, then you haven't changed. Well, what were you saying, pastor? It's all right to drink Yeah. The Bible didn't say we couldn't drink. It just said we couldn't get inebriated. Some of us get inebriated. Keep looking straight ahead. <laughs> but any time that we, our identity is compromised. Well, what do you mean, Pastor, when our identity is compromised? Because he says that, again, in Galatians, that we are the people that are supposed to have the fruit of the spirit. In other words, we're supposed to have love, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, temperance. Against such is no, no law. See, if we have those characteristics, 
If we have that identity, then we can own up to who we are. Well, I knew I wasn't going to get that many claps on that. Because some folk just don't want to change. Amen? Amen? And the only thing is, is that we can't change them. How many of you wives w w went into a marriage and said, I'm going to change him? Sister Gray is still trying to do it. We've been together 23 years and I still got some stuff that she can't change. Amen. Stephen, won't you get us a little bowl of syrup? You had no business with letting me watch Beverly Hillbillies. I can, eat, I can eat a half a box of cereal in one setting. I go get me a Jethro bowl. Because that's not going to change. I just, she said, well, baby, you're trying, I'm trying to get you to lose weight. I'm trying to get you to, she, I said, I'm going to heaven full. <laughs> and see, I'm just talking about the little simple things that she's trying to get to change. But God is trying to get to change those big things that are within you. And how you receive other people, how you treat other people, how you, how you, how you, and how you. Because he says, I give unto you a new commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. See, I can't, listen, he, he, he didn't say love one another as you love yourself, because I don't know how you love yourself. But I know how Christ loved me. He looked beyond all my faults and saw all of my needs. Anybody in here with me? Amen. All right. I believe I stated my, my first point that you got to understand who you are. You got to know who your identity is. My second point is, is that it's a duty behind it. It's a duty that we have to change. It's a duty that we must change. It's a duty that we have to own up to who we really are. Matter of fact, folk come to church religiously and never change. But the duty that Christ gives to us is that every day ought to be a changing moment. Matter of fact, if you, I tell New Hope each and every time, if you're still in the same place that you were last year, then something ain't right. Because the moment that you meet who Christ is, the moment that you meet who God is, then something ought to change each and every day. They ought to change. Listen, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I, I was proficient in cussing. Oh, yes, I was. Y'all know what proficient is. I was good at it. I would use a cuss word and wouldn't use the same one twice if I was cussing you out. But I, I learned that being a police officer. I did, because the first thing I had to do was this big tall man had to, I had to start in the jail. You know, when most of us ain't been to jail. Most of us ain't even seen the inside of a jail. Amen. But I, I've seen the outside and the inside. But those prisoners taught me how to cuss. When church, that's like Richard, I grew up in the church. When, when, grew up, I saw the picture out there where Richard is pulling the bell. And, as a little bitty kid, I got to get rid of this thing here. Uh, pulling the bell, but he grew up in church, but I grew up in church. Uh, most of us grew up in church, but somewhere along the way, our perspective of who we are changed. Matter of fact, they were able to change me. Chris, I could cuss, and I'm talking about cuss. Matter of fact, you rub me the wrong way nowadays. I <laughs> oh, don't act like don't like it. Don't act like I'm the only one. <laughs> you drive a car in here. Some of y'all done said some things. Matter of fact, Jennifer have to have to remind me of who I am. She said, "Preacher," because <laughs> you cut me off the wrong way. I may not, you might look at my, had anybody ever read the lips? 
<laughs> and then all of a sudden, when folk read, you know, when they read your lips, and then all of a sudden you look over there and the one and they go, because you are not upholding who you really are. Have you ever had somebody in, on, at work get on your nerves and you say it in your mind instead of on, out loud? Well, my grandmother said if you're going to say it that, you might work on it what? Because he accounts the sin even when you do it in your mind. That's why our duty is to always be in a changing mode because if we never change, we will eventually let what's in our mind come out. Anybody here? Anybody understand what I'm saying? That your duty is to change, but that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of what? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. That you've been called out of darkness. You've been called out as a change agent. You've been called out. Well, well, pastor, I'm, I'm trying to tell you what the church ought to be. What not what the building ought to be, but what we should be. Because if we're a change agent, then when somebody comes inside of these hollow walls, when somebody comes inside of New Hope, when somebody comes inside of First Methodist, they don't have a problem in seeing change folk. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Man was sitting out on the steps of New Hope. Man was sitting out on the steps of First United, crying, saying they won't let me in. Crying, tears flowing from his eyes, saying they won't let me in. Jesus walked up. Man didn't even recognize who Jesus was. Walked up and said, why are you crying? Old man said, they won't let me in. Jesus said, but why are you crying? He said, I've been trying to get in. I've been trying to be there. I've been trying to be a part of them, but they won't let me. They won't let me in. Jesus said, stop crying. They won't let me in either. See, when we try and do what we want to do and how we want to do it, then we leave the least, the lonely, and the left out still outside. Because Christ came for the least, the lonely, and the left out. Anybody ever felt like that? That you were the least and you, you were lonely in your life and, and you felt left out. But Christ said, forget about that. I came for you and I came for only you. Not only that, that I came that the world might know who we really are. See, so what are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell that the believers, because that's who Peter is talking to. He's telling the believers that we need to change. We need to be able to be encouraging to one another. We need to be able to lift one another up. We need to be able to do what we're supposed to be able to do in Jesus' name. Not only is there an identity problem. Not only is there a duty that we have to do, but then there's deliverance. See, I should have shouted right there. Amen. Because again, it says, to, of him who have called you out of darkness. So where's my deliverance? He put you in a marvelous life. Do you see it? Do you see it? Because when the believer is in a marvelous light, then we understand the I am. I tell New Hope to always trust in the I am. See, there are accounts in the Bible where the I am shows up. Matter of fact, if you understand who Moses is, Moses said, who shall I say sent me? He said, tell him I am. Matter of fact, when you look at what the word says, they ask Jesus, who are you? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. See, I don't, I, I don't put my trust in anything else but the I am. See, it's easy 
to, 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 to saying, I will trust in the Lord. But when we, when we understand that, that not only is it easy to say, but he ought to put some rubber to the road. That you're going to trust in him no matter what. You're going to trust him in the good days, and you're going to even trust him in the bad days. You're going to trust him no matter what. See, that's deliverance. When, when I put my trust in the I am, see, Revelations 3 and 20 says, what, what does it say? What, 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 what does it say? Because I know it's on there. I, I know I got it. They're going to give me it. They're gonna, that is, that is. Be, so behold, I stand at the door and what? And if any man hears my voice and open up the door, I will come in and what? Sup with him. Not only will I sup with him, he's going to sup with what? With me. In other words, I'm going to trust in the one that's going to spend time with me. I'm going to trust in the one that's going to be with me. I'm going to trust in the one that's going to walk with me. I feel my help coming. I'm going to trust in the one that's going to be right there by my side. I'm going to trust in the one. David said, when my mother and father forsake me, then the Lord is going to take me up. Even, I know Sister Grace loved me. She got to. She living in my house. <laughs> but even when she forsakes me, then the Lord is going to take me up. Why? He's going to take me up. Because he delivered me. See, that's why I said put your trust in the I am. Because he was the one in Revelation said, I was the one. I am the one that was dead, and now I live. So if you don't put your trust in him, you never can be the identity of who you are. Because my identity is in him. My trust is in him. Am I talking to anybody? I believe in him. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. Not only do I believe, but I trust in I understand, I read, and I study about, I meditate on, I, I, I hold on to, uh-huh, you're going to get it, uh-huh, you, you got it, because again, it's without him, I am nothing, but with him, with him. Anybody going to trust him? With him, I'm everything. Good evening, First United Methodist. Listen, the thief on the cross understood him. Listen what he says. Listen to his conversation with Jesus as he's dying. The thief on the cross never came to church. The thief on the cross never sung a song about him. The thief on the cross never entered into the sanctuary to be baptized. The thief on the cross never prayed. But the thief on the cross understood who was hanging there with him. Ah! Listen to his conversation. He says, when you come into your kingdom, see, I deserve what I'm getting. I'm a thief. I, I, I'm, I'm a wretch undone. I, I deserve the punishment that I'm getting. But you are an innocent man. Listen to how he identifies him. He says, when you come into your kingdom, well, I know who you are. I know that you're king of kings. I know that you're lord of lords. I, I know who you are. When you come into your kingdom, remember me. Our God, Jesus the Christ, stopped dying long enough. You, you, you know, he could have said, leave me alone. But he didn't say that. He stopped dying long enough to look up at him and he said, this day, 
not tomorrow. This day, you're going to be with me in paradise. And the Bible says that he that not only died that day, he gave up the ghost. He said, Father, into thine hands I commend my spirit. And he died. Didn't he die? Didn't he die? I, I believe he died. Didn't he die? But they took him down off the cross. And here's, here's I know Chris ain't going to do that, but they, they took him down. Not only did they take him down, but they put him in, in a borrowed tomb. You don't have to do it, but I'm about to do it here. Listen, not only did they put him in a borrowed tomb, but he stayed there Friday night. He stayed there Saturday night. He stayed there Saturday afternoon. He stayed there Saturday night. Uh, but my Bible tells me, yes, it does. My Bible tells me that he got up uh, early in the morning. Uh, he folded his clothes uh, neatly. Not only did he fold his clothes neatly, he went down to hell uh, and he took the keys uh, from the devil. I wouldn't trust a man uh, that don't have keys to his own house. Uh, matter of fact, he took it from him uh, and set the captives free. Who the sun sets free? Uh, it's free indeed. Uh, I got any free folk in here. Uh, I got anybody in here that's been freed. Uh, ah, and not only did he set them free, uh, but he rolled the stone away. Uh, he stepped out with all power of heaven and earth in his hands. Uh, so I know who I am. Uh, I know who I depend on. Uh, I lean and depend on Jesus. Is he all right? Uh, is he all right? <laughs>